bad good. So here's what we got going on for today. We're gonna put the trailer door springs on our trailer project. Now, a guy across the street does have a pressure washer going, so if you can hear it bad in the background, I do apologize. Uh, we will go in the trailer, and I'll try to pull the door shut, possibly. We're gonna do a lot of this from the inside, and I'm gonna explain everything as we go. I was looking online for videos on how to do this, and it's an absolute hit or miss. So it seems like um, you'll get bits and pieces off of watching multiple videos. And then I even had to read the comments to get some, um, to get some other pieces to the puzzle on how to actually, there's like some on how to replace the spring or the cables, but it's like they have one cable on one side. So that kind of holds everything in place. You just do the other side. We're doing one completely from scratch. So let's get in there and let's All get right, to so it. So first off, when you go to load these springs, you're going to have to have something to stick in the end of the spring to turn it. And I do have a fan going in here because it's hot. I'm trying to keep the noise down on y'all. So Mike told me that he uses an extension. So there is your 3 8 extension. Yeah. So the end of a 3 8 extension will work, but it definitely has some slop. I picked up online where they said to get a half inch rod. Let's see how this works. So a half inch rod is absolutely amazing so it fits absolutely amazing i picked this up from lowe's let's see here that's what it is it's just half inch solid rod i think it was like seven or eight dollars there's three feet of it you can get it back there where um all the metal is you know with the hardware and stuff like that so if you pick you up a half inch rod they'll work perfect um i don't know if we're going to need this from the way that i have picked up online of doing it but if i do i'm gonna cut it in half because you need two so if you get one of them, I think it's three feet cut in half as a foot and a half on each side. So mine's completely down from the accident, from the wreck. So we have to get mine mounted back up here. Um, they go on these brackets up here and they have bolts that just put them on or just holds it on. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to figure out A, the wrench size. I have seen three different sizes in videos. So I'm gonna figure out what mine is and undo the end of that spring and then mount it up so there. for mine a let's see here a 7 16th i think it was yes a 7 16th socket fits perfect but it needs to be a 12 point so let me show y'all your bolt head is a square bolt head on it so that's why you use a 12 point and it fits down in there perfect okay or you don't have that a what size is this a three eighths a three eighths open end wrench fits this drum set screw or clamping screw whatever you call it fits that perfect so let's see these should be the same size yeah so again seven sixteenths or the three eighths fits that perfect so if you bought a wrecked trailer like mine or you have took the spring down number one, or you are taking your spring down. I did not know this. When I took my spring down, it wanted to pull that bracket inwards this way, okay? So what I have learned now on installing it, I know I need to loosen this up because the bracket has to go that way, all right? So when you do all of this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it all up there. If you're resetting your spring from scratch and this is already mounted up there, okay? your spring if, if you have it up there your spring needs to be pulled out people say a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch somewhere around there you have to play with it basically when you do this procedure if you don't pull your spring out and set it farther up the bar then what will happen is the door will only go halfway down because of coal binding in the spring so if you're doing this from scratch and you're setting the tension or replacing the spring or whatever if you are messing with this end, this point, compared to what it was from the factory, you cannot have that 
just relax. Like it has to be pulled away. That is the important part I'm learning here. Okay. But what I'm going to do or attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to not do this. Okay. And instead of loosening this up and it sliding that way and putting my brackets on, I'm going to attempt to pull that bracket that way. Basically, you just want the spring separated a little bit. That's the whole important thing is this sets, you know, the distance set so the door goes all the way down instead of halfway. So that's the reason why I'm going to try to not disturb this setting because this is from the factory and I took it apart. So if I, it didn't spin like this when I took it apart, okay, because it's wound, it was off the door already. So if I can not touch this and just spread the, that bracket that way, then I shouldn't have to mess with this, I'm hoping. Or if I do, I can make me a mark here and I know my distance like this of what it needs to be. I can put a tape measure on this end for y'all and give you approximately what the spread was, okay? Again, pardon the fan noise. It is hot as crap in here and I'm trying to make it where it sounds best for y'all. So this is the spring in its relaxed state. So as you can tell, the bracket needs to actually come out about an inch and three quarters, okay? If you look at the wear mark on the shaft. So that I'm pretty sure actually, this should be about right there, give or take. So that's even more. So that's gonna be about two inches. So my advice is now that you might need to spread the spring that way two inches if you're starting from scratch. Um, same thing as me pulling this bracket this way two inches to separate these coals. So this is the reason why I didn't want to touch, touch it because I would have set it at half an inch or, you know, three inches. So this one on mine is damaged. That's the reason why we're doing all this. This trailer was in a wreck and when it flew off, it busted the end piece. This is supposed to have a hook where a cable hooks into it. Uh, mine is missing. So we have to replace the drum on this end. So curbside and roadside. The left hand side is your roadside. So that's going to be this side. Curbside has your door, has your man door. Okay. Your roadside won't have a door. So left hand is the roadside, right hand is the curbside. On my trailer, a lot of them that you look up on YouTube and stuff have two springs up top. Mine have one. I couldn't find anything that really said which side that spring goes on. I don't think it matters necessarily. Well, no. No, I did hear somewhere else that it doesn't matter in the direction the spring um, uncools or cools, whatever the thing. So I can tell you that I looked back at my YouTube video when we took this trailer apart, and my spring was on the curb side, the side that has the man door. So if you are only, if you have a setup that you only have one spring, I would recommend putting it on the side that has the door because I feel like that is the correct side being that's how mine was when I took it apart and it was working it was working before the cables got busted in the wreck for the cables we just ordered off of eBay a cable repair kit okay so it has the ends right here that hook into your drums your drums are then pieces on the end that look like pulleys I was calling them pulleys when I first started this process they're actually drums this is gonna hook to your trailer door so I've got to get this side hooked to the trailer. I got to get this spring, the whole rod assembly put back up. And then I have to get these hooked to the sides of the trailer doors. Then we can replace our drum and wind it up. So let me get that done. Actually, I'm gonna put my drum on first before I put it up because I don't know if I'm gonna have the room and I don't want to do it twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off, put the drum on there and then put the whole thing up. I'm gonna put the cables on the door, the little tabs that you have on the edge of your doors. And then I'll get okay, back. So with the situation I have right now is I got that side on. I put the bracket on. Okay, the bracket is on the goes on the outside of the plate. I noticed that because of the way the paint is on the bracket. So I did have to force the bracket that way a little to get it around that side. But then when you come to this side, this bracket is way off. So if I show you, hold it back up here. As you can see, it's way off, and it takes a tremendous amount of force. Just letting this hang because I'm doing all this by myself as always so that takes a tremendous amount of force to get it to go that way I can't get it to budge so I'm gonna take this ratchet strap I'm gonna try to hook it right here around one of these or inside one of these holes 
and try to go to the side of the frame and see if I can crank it enough that way without killing myself and to get that bracket back around that side. Because again, I don't want to loosen this screw if I can help it because I want that spring to stay at the distance. And even if I loosen it so I can get this bracket on, now you have to take a ratchet strap or something. You have to figure out a way to pull this spring back into place. If you're replacing or if you're resetting this spring and you undo these bolts, like I said, it has to come inwards. So you have to pull the spring inwards. So it don't matter if I pull it now to pull the bracket that way or if I pull it later on the spring. So I'm going to try to do what I feel is easier and not touch the spring and hope that I don't have to reset that because if I loosen these, I'm going to have to reset that. And like I said, I will repeat again, if I am going to loosen these and if your situation matches mine, then I'm going to make a mark right here so I know the spread. Okay, so I have it back up. This is how I hook my ratchet strap in. I just hooked it in there and then I come over here, hook it to the frame of the trailer and I do have one bolt in. It didn't take a ton of, of tension or pulling where you feel really scared, but you definitely want to be careful. Uh, you can see the force that that pulley being squished against the wall did on the wires and all that. So of course I'll cut them wires right there. Them wires are just for the outside marker lights. Um, but now it's off the wall. Now that we have pulled it back that way and we are back where we're supposed to be at as far as uh, that you know piece that I showed y'all how it was wore there. So that looks back right. This is gonna need to be tightened up because obviously this is crooked. Um, so I'm gonna snug all these down, straighten everything up, make sure my brackets are square off the trailer and uh, all that. And obviously it don't have enough force to really bend them, bend them brackets or nothing, but it does have some force, so just be careful. All right, so what I have done is I have took the end of my cable. All right, so you got this end right here. You hook this in to the door and then you take this in and you put it through the slot like that and then it hooks, okay? And then you'll loosen these bolts if they're not already loose and you'll just, with your hand, you'll just wind this up. There should be, the rod's not gonna be turning. You loosen these bolts up so this drum, drum is free spinning on the rod, okay? And then you just turn it. There's absolutely no tension on it. You just turn it and wound the cable all the way up around it. You end up with it looking like this, okay? There's no tension on this still, but because this is a brand new cable, it's wanting to kind of unspool itself. So I just put this clamp right here just to keep it from unspooling itself, even though this really has no tension on it hardly at all. Now, what I am gonna do is right before I set that side, I'm gonna go get me a pair of vice grips and I'm gonna clamp it to this bar. That way, right before I set this side, I can turn this bar like this, okay? And you can look at clamp down there in and pull that little bit of slack out. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, or you put your extension in here and turn it, whatever you wanna do. But since I'm working down here, I'm gonna put a bare vice grip so that I can turn it just to turn the slack out of it and tighten this down and hopefully get that clock enough. It's really, it's a lot easier if you have two, two people. So you have four sets of hands holding everything versus how I'm doing it, but I will figure it out. I actually might go ahead and just turn it like this and turn the slack out of it. I think that's actually what I'll do. Either way, you just, you wanna make sure your slack's out of the cable. Right, so I'm learning this right here with y'all. So I went to undo these and it didn't really wanna turn. And so I made sure these were finger loose, turned it some more and the rod slipped that way just a little bit because of course that spring has, that spring down here has spread on it. So it's trying to pull everything that way. So what I have done is just put me some plywood and a block between here so that the rod physically can't go no more that way since that side is locked down. So you're gonna want to, if you're in the same situation as me or modify all this for your situation before you unloosen that in, if you already have your spring spread out like I did mine, then you're gonna wanna put something block on the end so it don't go that way. If you're doing this all from scratch, brand new, then obviously none of this would happen. When you're done, you would just put a ratchet strap in your spring and you would just pull your spring, I'm guessing the two inches of what mine was. There are There is math equations online of how to figure out all that stuff and wound it up and everything. I'm just giving y'all what I did to hopefully try to help somebody else out. So now when I loosen these bolts, that can't go that way because it's blocked up by some two by fours and plywood. All right, so what I've had to do, because it wasn't working out what I did, of course I've got the ends on, the pulleys and everything, 
I winded this spring this way so that under pressure, it was forcing my clamp into the door. The problem with that is that's the same way that the cable, basically your pulley turns, okay? So what you want it to do is you want it to turn this way so it keeps tension on this cable, on this drum, okay? So you're gonna have to, I still have not undid this, but I stuck my rods in and I turned it, let's see here, I went that way, turned it that way with it. I think, or did I come down? I turned whatever way, <laughs> it's all backwards. I turned it whatever way keeps tension upwards. So there's a lot of tension right now upwards, not a ton. I mean, I turned it a couple times to load some tension in it. So now this time, when I set my drums hand tight and I tighten the set screws on them, hand tight, when I release this clamp, it's gonna wanna pull the cable that way, which is gonna keep tension on the door this way. So you just, when you put your clamp on it, you want it forcing your vice grip into the roof and you're just gonna use a pair of vice grips to keep it from spinning. I guess you could also use a rod. You could put your, you could put your socket or your rod in there and let it go up and hit the roof. That would be the same thing. I'm just using a pair of vice grips, but either way, you want a couple of turns where there's a little decent, a little bit of tension on it so that it's pushing your clamping piece, whatever it is, into the roof. Now I'm gonna, with my hands, set these snug and I'm gonna take it apart and see if that works. My, my clamps are on here only so, they're, they're loose, there's no tension on them, only so my cable doesn't spring out all over the place. This side started to let loose, as you can see right there, and so I have to redo this side. So that's what I was trying to avoid. This side worked because I clamped it towards the end of the cable, but that's all there for, so nobody's wondering like if there's tension or anything like that. It's just to keep everything from unspooling since I don't have an extra set of hands. To get to this back bolt, I've had to use this flex head plus this, uh, you know, the socket. So, I mean, you're gonna have to get creative to get some of the bolts. The bolt down there, that one I was able to just get with a wrench, but uh, you're definitely gonna have to get creative if your bolt winds up like mine on the unlucky side of the back. All right, I have both ends on here. They don't have a ton of slack. They're just turned by my hands to take the slack out and then the bolts are tightened down on the shaft of the spring. The spring is still cold up and held with the pliers, okay? And this side also doesn't have a ton of slack. So now what I'm about to do is put the camera down. I'm gonna take my rod, put it in here, turn it so that I can get the vice grips off and then slowly let it go. When that lets it go, that should take the slack out of both sides of the cables. Okay, so that was very easy, nothing hard at all. Uh, the vice grips are off. That side, you know, is, is snug. It has a little tension on it. This side has a little tension on it. That side has more tension than this side, just because it seems like human nature, it's hard to get both set 100% equal. I figured after it goes up and down a couple times and the cables get really worked in, and bent like they're supposed to, I will probably clamp it and recheck the bolts and re-snug them up, make sure they're right. So now I'm gonna go outside the trailer and see if it opens correctly. So as you can see, it's opened. It opened correctly. The cables are on it, everything's secure. When it goes back shut, I'm definitely gonna just snug the cables back up one more time to make sure that everything is right. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what, now that I have done one of these and I understand this thing, See, this side has more tension on it than this side. It's just not, I mean, it's just how it is. I mean, it's got tension on it, but it's just not quite as tight. I uh, might have to mess with that some more, but I'm gonna tell you one now thing. Now that I have an understanding of how these cables work, they scare me. They scare me a ton, actually. So, uh, you know, I was the one always standing on somebody's trailer, leaning on the cables or kind of bouncing on the cable a little bit with your butt. You know, everybody's done it. Or you see kids swinging on the cables, pulling on the cables. And now that I understand that that spring is coiled up, which I knew it was, but that there's just set screws in there. And when the door's down, it has all of its tension. When the door's up, it don't have no tension. Meaning that when it's down, them cables are under an extreme amount of tension. It kind of makes you rethink about playing on them cables, you know, if one was to bust loose or if one of the things were to come loose, which technically if one of the pulleys were to come loose, nothing would happen except for the door would kind of go slack and the cable would go slack. It's not like it would whip because it's not going to want to spring back up really because of the other side. Now, if it broke down here at the come apart at the bottom of the door, then yeah, it's going to whip that cable up. So 
I have a new respect for these doors now that I have set one myself. Um, but like I said, next time it goes up, I'm just gonna recheck all your bolts, uh, make sure everything is snug, you know, go up and down with it full time. And if you want to, you know, readjust your pulleys, you certainly can. Hopefully that helps somebody out. Hopefully you can understand my jibber jabber. Um, I'll go over it one more time real fast for anybody that didn't fully get it. Now that I've kind of wrapped my head around it, you want to get your cable, your rod with your spring on it, mount it up there in a neutral position with no tension, okay? Then what you want to do is, with your brackets bolted on like we bolted my brackets on, then what you want to do is put a couple lines, uh, a couple turns in your spring, clamp it so that your vice grips or your rod, whatever, is pushing up against the roof. Once you have that done, then you can set your end drums, okay? So wind your end drums up, snug them with your hands, tighten the bolts down, do both sides, then you're good to go take your bar off a little, however you wanna do it. I had pulled my bar down in the center to relieve the vice grip that was on the end. When that, when you unrelieve that, that's gonna pull the cables tight while the door's up, take a little bit of slack out, and then you should be good to go. You should be able to just put it down. Um, if you need any adjustments made, definitely make the adjustments with the door up because that's when it's under the least amount of tension. It's only the only tension it's under when the door is up is the amount of tension that you put it under when you first wound the spring. So if you did one turn, that's all it's under. You know, if you did four turns, that's all it's under. It's under as the door goes down, the spring winds tighter and tighter and tighter, and that's what helps it come back up. So I guess if you need a little more help going up, then you want to, with the door closed, you want to pull the spring, wind it like a half more turn or one more turn, and that's going to make it tighter. If your door slams up too fast, then you're probably going to want to take one, you know, or a half or whatever, winds out of it, like loosen the spring, basically. But do everything when the door's closed. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and hopefully if you're new to the channel and you found us because of this trailer video, maybe you'll stick around and we'll teach you some other stuff. Thanks, y'all.